month or whatever whatever works for your particular situation or, or um, you know how close as you are to the field so typically you just pick pick a, a crew that's working on something or you can just pick a single person and you uh, in within the preparation part you know, I, I've, so what I've done here is listed a couple examples of, you know, well, what are key messages that we want to leave? And this form was basically just all blank before. And I always had like the standard two that I used all the time. So I just went ahead and filled them in just in case somebody, you know, has a hard time coming up with, you could feel free to use these or you could cross through these and use your own. We'll, we'll certainly have, you know, this document available as well as the blank document if, if you'd like to just fill in your own. But the two that I've put on here as far as what key messages would you like to leave, and these are the messages that you want to leave with those individuals on the crew or that person. But it's, you know, the worker or the workers fully understand their right and their duty to refuse to do unsafe work or be in an unsafe condition. And that's part of our American Homes basic safety requirements. And the right and the duty kind of goes along with what we talked about in the beginning. I mean, I, I feel responsible, but I feel responsible first to set good quality expectations and understandings that they're going to come and do the right thing. But what we really want to get across to every single person, you can't miss this opportunity. If you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody to, I mean, you've already taken the time. You've committed, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to go through the felt process, really use that that maybe just five minutes in front of them in the in the uh, you know meeting portion to impart this message. I mean, not not every culture, not every company has the same culture that we have. You know, how how many individual workers out there right now, you know, might might feel you know some burden, some you know, pressure to perform, you know, in an unsafe condition. We, maybe, maybe we should just assume, uh, you know, that, that they've never heard these words before. And this is just a great time when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody. This isn't, you know, standing in front of, even good to go, even as impassioned as those conversations are, that's still, you know, one person standing up in front of a group of 10 or 20 or 50, and it's still, you know, 10 or 20 or 50 guys sitting around or, or workers sitting around, it's different when you're having this conversation with a couple of people or a crew of four and you can lean in close and say the words, you know, do, do you realize it's, it's not only your right, I expect you to not put yourself in a hazardous situation and go beyond, I, I mean, I expect you to say something to your buddy on this crew. I expect you to look out the window and say something to somebody that doesn't even work for the company that you work for. When people get hurt and people get killed, it, unfortunately it's not always just that person. Sometimes it ends up affecting the people that are you know, right around you. Think, think about you know, some of the fatality situations that we've had with you know, electrocute, not that we've had, but that happen with you know, electrocutions or uh, you know, just, just bad, bad scenarios where it's not only the person that gets hurt, but sometimes they end up affecting others. So this is really that message of you know, just making sure before you leave that meeting that they have the understanding that it's their right and it's their duty be beyond anything else, beyond anything else. The second one is near misses and incident reporting are key to, prov to providing a safe workplace. So how, how many, you know, you think average workers out there understand that, right? But in their mind, it's like, you know, like four years old, right? I'm not gonna tell you I colored on the wall or I'm gonna get spanked, you know? That's, that's, that's that, it's the compliance, you know, it's human nature, it's not just the compliance nature, Sean. I was, gonna, I was just thinking the best example of that that I could think of is, with that uh, nails that were too long and they were sticking through the wood mm -hmm. and then Brandon, you know, somebody reported that they got scratched on it. What did that do? That caused us to get different sized nails and now that danger is gone. It's a safer workplace. If 
that person had just slapped the band-aid on it and went back to work and didn't tell anybody that we would still have that condition today. Somebody else could have gotten worse. Right. Or worse. That's a perfect example. So near misses, you know, I, I'll tell you, we won't be able to say enough words to drive home about near misses because that that's a concept. I'm not even sure we're all you know fully trained within our own company about what is a near miss. We we've, we've worked really hard on it the last you know six months or a year, and we'll keep working on it. Um, but we really you have to get beyond that compliance barrier with the folks that you're you're meeting with in the field. Get beyond the compliance and get them comfortable reporting an incident and then ultimately training to what a near miss is. So well, what is a near miss, right? A near miss is it's the incident that just didn't happen. It's the last chance to fix something before somebody gets hurt. <clears throat> the last chance. If you don't fix it at the near miss stage, somebody's going to get hurt. Maybe they don't get hurt bad. Maybe they just skin their knee. Maybe they just fall down going up the stairs. But they still get hurt. And that's not good. And that's not injury free. So we can feel real proud that we don't have any reportables year to date, July, or maybe in the last year. We don't have a recordable. And we could be proud of that. We haven't hurt anybody bad enough, they had to go get work done. But we can't we can't rest on that. We have to keep pushing, we have to keep exploring all of those pillars until we can get to injury free. So reporting of, you know, even though it doesn't feel good in the moment, we have to be able to report incidents. And this is a harder message to get across with, with the <coughs> vendors. And I know you that are out there all the time, you know, no, you'll be, you'll be looking at the thousand yard stare while you're saying the words. But we have to keep saying the words. We have to keep saying them and then we have to keep reinforcing them. We have to keep acting like there's no other way. This is the way. This is what we expect. And if we find out that you did something and it's not what we expect, it's going to be a tougher conversation, right? So we have to really coach them for incidents, and we have to. Co and I'll tell you, I've already said the words to our leadership team and beyond. We can be pretty proud about our recordable and you know where we're at today. But I tell you, things are going to get worse before they get better. And I don't mean worse in the fact that they're really going to get worse. I mean. We're asking, we're training, we're teaching for incidents to be reported. Don't think I'm so naive to believe that I don't think there's really incidents that are happening out there that just don't get reported. Now maybe, you know, I'm hoping people aren't limping away from our job site, right? But, you know, certainly, that, you know, there's finger cuts and there's, you know, maybe muscle strains that are happening that aren't being reported because there's there's a culture out there. It's that you know compliance-based culture. So we have to continue to coach, we have to continue to push, and we have to continue to expect. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about are these key learnings. What do we want to learn from these interactions that we're having in the field? And here's a couple of possible scenarios that I wrote down. Um, does the worker have an adequate understanding of our good to go standards? So I, you know, I set the program up so hopefully by the end of the year, each and every person that we're out there having a conversation with will have went through the good to go program. But it's just a good check back, right? Again, I said we're giving the good to goes to these groups of you know 10, 30, 50. Is, is everybody fully understanding? We have to keep, you have to keep doubling back. You have to keep reinforcing the message. So if you keep it visible, if you keep asking, you keep talking about it, it stays visible. The second one I wrote down to the workers have proper training, equipment, and support from their company. So we interview every company before we ever let them get started, right? We bring in their leadership team. We even go out and look at what they're doing for other contractors before we even let them come on our job. And you know, we've got a pretty we got a pretty good pre-qualification process. But you know, is, is the safety culture, you know, is that translating through their whole, the whole fiber of their company? You don't really know until you start asking 